Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday I'm off out again. See you in a minute. <laughs> Now, as I've probably mentioned before, I'm having to start doing a bit more in the garden and I took the opportunity of going over to the Malvern Spring Garden Festival with my wife uh, last weekend. So I thought you could come along and have a look. It's not just about flowers and gardens. There's an awful lot more there and uh, I thought it might be of interest to take a quiet walk around with you. Now, this was the first chance we'd had to go to Malvern for three years effectively because of Covid so it was going to be interesting to see if it got the same feeling as it had in the past or whether people were still scared away from events like this but um, early signs were when we got to the car park that there were plenty of people there and um, even at half ten there were people coming out with trolleys loaded with plants and all sorts so I think uh, we were in for a good day almost as soon as you go in um, the main flower tent was in front of us but the, uh, even on the way to get to it there were all sorts of interesting things that, that again aren't directly garden related um, in terms of people doing blacksmithing there were demonstrations going on and again it's one of these things that you see and you see that they run courses for blacksmithing and making stuff and you think yeah that would be a, a, an interesting extra thing to do and the same with timber there was a, a place there that had stocking reclaimed timber and all sorts so even before we'd even got into the plants I was starting to find things that again spark off things you want to do in the future flowers themselves I mean to me they're all just different coloured things that adorn the garden. I, I haven't got any great um, specialism or, or interest in, in these things. It's my wife's department, I just plant them, but um, again you get all the, the various specialities that people are interested in, like cacti, like lilies, like there's all the um, meat-eating plants, there's the bonsai that I always think would be great around a model railway in the garden but unfortunately I think they need a, a lot more care and attention than just plonking in the ground and getting on with it. it it's one of these things that becomes uh, a sort of a full-time job like YouTube and <laughs> anything else that you take up as a hobby. I always think the uh, the pitcher plants and things are sort of almost sci-fi in, in look and feel. And as usual I was far more interested in looking through the gaps in the side of the tent and seeing what was going on outside in terms of the the way the logistics of these things run and how people sort of bring the plants in and what sort of trailers they've got all sorts of things like that to me that's as as interesting if not more than than some of the plants themselves particularly like the um, plant labels that they've got in in I think it was oak and there's a little curly sort of wire bit that sticks in the pot and again it's something that I've mentally put aside as being a future project if you like then outside it just becomes a a sort of an overload of sensory sort of different things that you don't expect to see. They've got the gardens that you find like at Chelsea. This is, if you like, the pre-forerunner to Chelsea. This happens a few weeks before Chel uh, Chelsea and a lot of people sort of go there and then move on to Chelsea and then they go on to Hampton Court and Tatton, Totten, Tatton is it I think up north, um, one after another during the year. But I just like seeing all the, the various items that are unusual, like all the core steel that's cut out and making figures and things for the garden. And particularly I was taken with the wood that I think it's tree root they use to make these fantastic sculptures. Um, that I think these are the things that if you if you win your Euro millions or whatever, that's the sort of thing I 
would like to see tucked away in the corner of a garden somewhere, something uh, as, as quite as clever and interesting as that. Then moving on from that, there's a whole series of sheds that have got everything from antiques through to um, craft things. I was interested in the, in the benches at nearly £400 each, bearing in mind I was worried about spending £500 on oak for four benches, or three benches and a table. But there are a whole load of... the, the top, top area was all sort of antique -y stuff. Um, obviously I was drawn towards the Land Rover bits and pieces that um, were there. particularly like the little tray and again that's something I've thought I might look at as a project that was made of olive wood just little blocks of basically offcuts all glued up nicely um, then going down moving down there's a series of these sheds which are sort of going downhill slowly you step down from one to the next but again winter chair making something again I've seen the courses for and you look at it and you think, yeah, that would be quite interesting because you can go and buy a Windsor chair for about £600 or you can have a one-week course to make one and, and I somehow think that's probably a better deal. Um, but all of these different crafts were are just inspiring to see design and, and things made out of, or handmade out of nice materials. Then I caught up with um, Andy at Manor Wood who is a YouTuber that I have followed for a long time. Uh, he was there with some of his resin tables and uh, chopping boards, things like that. He does some really fantastic uh, big tables, furniture, shop fit-outs, all sorts of things, uh, bar fit-outs, I should say. But it was good to catch up with the a fellow YouTuber, albeit on a cosmically different scale. They are incredible. That's the sort of thing she's been interested in. And again there's glass, there's silver, all sorts of different materials, people are using ceramics, so it was far more than, as I say, just a few flowers and plants. And whilst these are things that you might not be able to afford because they are generally fairly expensive, again it's the inspiration of some of the things you see, you think I could have a go at that or I could make something like that or even if you can't match the skill levels it's still a, an inspiration to see things that are different. I've not used my scroll saw much since I had it four years ago but again I've seen these before and I see them again now and it, it's sort of again you think yeah you know what I might not want to use a scroll saw much but when you see something like that you think that would be a very interesting project to do and again things of beauty rather than what I would normally associate with a, a scroll saw project if you like. Same with the wood turning, I, I don't do a lot of wood turning because I didn't want a house full of bowls and vases if you like but again 
some of the things you see you think well maybe there's room for one like that or you know and again these sculptures some of the simple shapes just nicely beautifully finished just produce something that uh, things of beauty rather than of any sort of functional value really again more stands with people offering um, courses on how to make things out of wood that again inspire you put away in your mind for future <coughs> use did wonder about making a set of those for the back garden but um, I think I was dissuaded from that by my better half and again somebody making traditional trugs something I'd not seen done before uh, didn't know anything about so again you're constantly learning this whole um, idea of, of taking what looks like scrap timber almost and making something that's functional with uh, quite a lot of skill just to make these nice traditional trugs We've got the usual greenhouse envy from my wife because these things are about three times the size of hers but um, Sometimes you have to accept the fact that you just haven't got enough room. Just the same as I have shed envy. Um, we haven't got room for all of these wonderful things that you'd like. Outside again, there are rows and rows of plant stands with selling plants as well. And that's usually where the downfall comes for us. Um, we've got a garden that's stuffed full of plants, but somehow we always seem to manage to come away with more and, uh, anything that attracts bees to me is well worth having in the garden back in the uh, one of the halls a load of garden sculptures again interesting seeing how people make things out of different materials um, as much as anything nothing necessarily to do with the fact that you specifically want that thing but that you see something that you you rather like and I'm hoping that the wisteria we planted at the top of the garden will grow as well as that we started to at that point gather plants and because it was a nice day get an ice cream and have a look around a couple of the smaller external gardens as I mentioned they haven't got the the sort of gardens you find at Chelsea um, but pretty much everything else has got the same sorts of things that you would normally find at one of the bigger garden shows problem with Chelsea is that it's constrained within a very small site and therefore it's tremendously cramped um, here you've got a whole agricultural showground where there's plenty of room for people to uh, to spread out and so it doesn't feel crowded even though there are a lot of people there but you can at least see some of the smaller gardens they've got there get some inspiration if you've got four grand you can get yourself a nice uh, moon arch that's probably as big as our entire garden but uh, it's more about getting ideas than anything I think There are some small gardens there that again you can pick up ideas and inspiration from. It doesn't all have to be massive amounts of money and room. Just 
and then it was back into the flower tent at the end of the show both to pick up bargains from stands that are selling things off and also I, I find the whole thing fascinating in terms of the logistics and the illusion that you have from the show if you like you start to see things undressed you see the stands all stripped down and how they've got to do what they do and they're not really gardens they're tables covered in stuff uh, and it's very much like the the breakdown of a model railway exhibition if you like in terms of the sort of vibe in the place but we've got uh, a couple of handfuls of plants so it's time to go back to the car wind our way home and all I've got to do now is find some room in the garden to put the damn things okay so lots more than just gardens and flowers a um, few things there that were of inspiration um, both projects that I can think about doing in the future and, and things that you see that you think wow that's uh, I'd like to be able to do that things you can aspire to and it was interesting and, and good to meet up with Andy from Manor Wood um, for those of you that don't follow his channel have a look it's well worth a look he, he does resin tables and, and woodworking on a pretty much an industrial scale and it is Andy who is the reason I like my 4040 aluminium so much he introduced it on his channel um, for making racking and benches many years ago and I followed suit from that so uh, I call him an influencer as well hope it was of interest look forward to seeing you next week we'll try and be doing something different and I look forward to seeing you then bye